Hello and welcome to Counseling Ethics Lecture 7. My name is Dr. Amber Hughes. In this lecture I want to review multicultural competence. I want to start with a couple of definitions. First, what is culture? In counseling, our definition of culture is broad and includes a lot of different characteristics such as ethnicity, geographic origin, race, gender, age, ability, education level. All of those things go into our definition of culture. This really makes all counseling cross-cultural, as we consider all individuals to be unique representations of their culture. The second definition is competence. So what is competence? Competence is the extent to which a therapist has the knowledge and skill required to deliver a treatment to the standard needed for it to achieve its expected effects. This is referring again obviously specifically to treatment whenever we think of multicultural competence we think of uh, the population or the client okay um, so with multicultural competence it's the extent to which a therapist has the knowledge and skill required to deliver a treatment to diverse populations now we bring ethics into the issue according to our code of ethics we are ethically required to be multicultural competence multiculturally competent across all specialties. This means that the American Counseling Association and KCREP, remember KCREP is our, our accrediting body, uh, consider diversity to be a defining characteristic of the counseling profession. Your training in your counseling program is preparing you to be a multiculturally competent counselor. Okay. There are three components to being a multiculturally competent counselor. First, we have to be aware of our personal values, biases, and assumptions. We all have them. Okay, so going back to that definition of culture, um, we are all cultural people, right? Um, so we all have all of those things that are uh, contributing to make us who we are. Therefore, it's not a matter of eliminating our values, our biases, and our assumptions. Rather, it's a matter of acknowledging them and being aware of them. Okay. Uh, the second component is to be knowledgeable about cultural values, biases, and others' assumptions. So to be a multiculturally competent counselor, we have to have kind of a general understanding of different cultures. And you'll get that through like your diversity class and through your other classes in your counseling program. However, you may need to do a little bit of research and seek professional development on your own if you're working with a specific population that you just got a little bit of information about. The third component is to develop culturally appropriate interventions for diverse clients. And so you'll see that we have a diversity component in pretty much every class you take. So whenever you take a theories class, a techniques class, uh, you'll see kind of a diversity diversity considerations or multicultural considerations um, as being a part of the textbook, as being a part of your discussions, as being a part of lectures. So we really include that in all of those classes and it's addressing this issue of making sure that we are able to develop culturally appropriate interventions for different populations of people. Now you may feel like you aren't competent to counsel certain populations. Sometimes the classes you take just don't seem to provide you with enough information. For example, you take a theories class, right? But this class just provides you an overview of the different counseling theories, right? You're being introduced to all the different counseling theories there are. This is a lot of information and you certainly wouldn't feel able to implement a theoretical approach without more information and training. You get this during your field work. Sometimes you get this by going to a training or a workshop on a, on a particular theory or technique. Sometimes you get this through reading and research. Uh, but we get it through different ways, okay? The same goes for multicultural competence. You're given a lot of information in your diversity course, and like I said, we infuse diversity into all of the courses. However, this likely isn't going to be enough, okay? Some of it's about just practicing, right? And again, you're going to get this through your field work where you're working with a, a diverse range of people. So some of it, again, is just about application and practice. However, like I mentioned, you may need to do more research and you may need additional supervision when you work with certain populations for the first time. I want you to consider three final points in terms of multicultural competence. First, your training provides you with the foundation to be a multiculturally competent counselor. However, 
Again, you may need additional research training and supervision to be competent with certain populations. Second, it is your ethical responsibility to become competent to counsel all populations. So ACA is assuming you can and should be competent even if you aren't already. Okay, so if you feel you are not competent to counsel a specific population, it is your ethical responsibility to become competent. And ACA is saying that because of your training, you can do this. Okay, it may take, again, a little bit of research. It may take uh, some professional development. But ACA is saying, yes, you are able to do this because we know what your training is. Because remember, uh, KCREP is... Um, is a part of our, our, you know, our counseling organization, not a part of it, but it's, um, there's a lot of, uh, conversations that happen. Okay. So KCREP is making sure that your program is making sure you are able to be competent. All right. And finally, we do not discriminate based on any aspects of culture as counselors. It is our ethical responsibility to not discriminate. Some states, for example, Tennessee, um, well, Tennessee, I, I say some states are seeking ways to legally allow counselors to choose not to counsel certain individuals. However, Tennessee's already passed a law, okay? So Tennessee, in particular, has passed a law saying that um, in terms of law, counselors can choose to not counsel certain individuals based on their personal beliefs, and this is um, likely targeting LGBT folks, okay? This does not change our ethical code, all right? So we are still ethically bound to first bracket our personal beliefs and second, not discriminate, and third, become competent to counsel all populations. So remember, this is, um, there may be times, like I mentioned before, where laws and ethics collide. However, that doesn't change our ethical code, okay? So even though the law may allow some things, it doesn't mean that you aren't still ethically responsible to provide um, services to all people.